Welcome to Critical Hit, a major spoilers podcast. Thank you, everyone, for downloading and checking us out this week. Oh, my goodness. We're inside the uh, the tea house. We got off that awful boardwalk. But, Rodrigo, I have a question for you before we get started. And uh, we kind of discussed this just a little bit after last uh, week's recording. But to me, that entire Toad's Boardwalk thing, where we're constantly being distracted and kept on the path and kept you know doing all those things really felt like a secret skills challenge. Mm-hmm. And um, I- I'm wondering why you didn't make it just an, a, a straight out skills challenge uh, for that for that episode. Uh, well, I was originally planning on making it a skills challenge, but uh, everybody was kind of having a good time like experimenting with what was happening and, and mm-hmm. talking to to people and so you know things like combat like skills challenges they kind of codify time and moves and character interactions oh uh, yeah um so they are good for uh depicting certain things but the kind of uh, as we got going with that I couldn't find a good place to be like, okay, now we're going to start this thing uh, where you guys are trying to get out of the boardwalk. And you're right. It was sort of a secret skills challenge. I did uh, ask for a lot of roles and they did uh, ro- essentially roles did dictate how you guys went about doing it. But um, I think, uh, Personally, I feel that a very important skill for game masters to learn is when to take their plans and alter them or throw them out altogether or mm-hmm. just kind of let let the players uh, take the lead. So that's kind yeah. of what I did there is I just put it in the court of the players and just reacted to it, um, which really just turned it into a regular role play thing with some roles to to uh to adjust what was happening yeah no i really enjoyed that That was a lot of fun but then after we were done i was like wait that was just a skills challenge so uh i i enjoyed how that came out and and uh i wanted to make sure that you weren't secretly you know keeping track of things behind and altering you know if it wasn't truly a true skills challenge as much of it as it was just you know role play i mean uh, that is that's that would have been my prerogative as a game master to Mm -hmm. to have been keeping track of it but um the the issue with skill challenges specifically is that they're meant to be uh fair as far as the spotlight right yeah yeah and so um you know with this i would it would have felt weird for ket to be like okay well i'm going to try this again and for me to be like no randus try something <laughs> right so right it uh, more much more of a free flow thing but you know i did keep track of what everybody's good and bad roles were and they you know caused direct impact into what was happening yeah i think somebody lost their little uh troll doll Aww. Aww. Anyway. i don't think that was a role so much <laughs> as my refusal to make a role and put mm-hmm. us further into the skill challenge <laughs> <laughs> and yet your refusal to make a role also had significant outcomes sometimes these things happen you know mm-hmm. yep so anyway last time on critical uh, critical go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> well, Rodrigo, I think we are caught up uh, on just about everything, right? We're in the tea house. We have to yeah. do some gambling. You've decided to do some gambling, yes. Well, at least Ket mm. decided to do some gambling. Uh-huh. What? How is every? I, I'm curious, real quick. What is everyone's stand on a games of chance? Uh, uh, your characters. Your characters. How do you mean Stand. Uh, are you someone that is in favor of it? Because I've, I've been thinking about this because we were talking uh, before about, you know, Orums, you know, what is the um, what is the government system in the Feywild for for Orum and, and his people? And we were talking about how it's basically an oligarchy. And it would seem like Orum may be slightly interested in games of chance, but really that's kind of a waste of money. That's a kind of a waste of potentially a waste of resources. If you know that it's balanced in the house. So he may not be someone that is like, I'm sitting down and I'm gambling all I want, but if it's a, you know, a casual game of cards, eh, that's not a, that's not a big deal. And we have seen, you know, we did have a whole gambling thing where Sam may have lost an assistant. Now, Cad lost the oh, assistant. Well, Sam, got it. Sam got it back. That's yes. right. Yes. Thank that's right. you. What? 
What? And no one ever thanks me for that. That's not how I that. remember things. <laughs> well, we know where Ket stands on gambling. What about Randis? Uh, um, I don't know. Uh, it's like a lot of pressure. I... <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, uh, Sakar? I see no reason to prohibit such things, but in my opinion, it's... It, it, a friend of mine referred to it once as the math tax, <laughs> in that gamblers pay money because they're not good at math. Mm, mm, mm-hmm. uh, Sam? Uh, Sparkle believes that the game is fixed, so you should uh, cheat if you can't get caught. Oh, there you, you go. Don't think you- That's a good one. All right. Well, there you go. I think the future, future questions to podcast at uh, Majorspoilers.com have already been answered. Now, Rodrigo, we can get back into this story. Okay. So, yes. Uh, On credit card. Yes. Uh, So, Kat went over to try to grind into the uh, private rooms. What is everyone else doing? Uh, What kind of game is Kat playing? Uh, he is playing a card game called uh, Windy Jarjo. Is this a um, is this kind of an establishment where they will allow people to hover and observe, or is this kind of one like, hey, hey, hey go go do something? So the biggest issue here is that there's a lot of people playing in relatively close proximity. So mm-hmm. as long as you don't take up too much room, you can hang out and observe. Um, Every table has a dealer who is keeping an eye out for cheating. Also, every ta- table has a weird metal bird on it. Um, hmm. I just thought that would be important to, to point out. Um, so hmm. uh, definitely four people hovering over one person would be too much. Uh, then I think uh, free drinks. Are there free drinks in this establishment? Uh, there are if you have a room or you're gambling. Okay. Um, what are the lowest stakes games that are out there? Like, or the lowest um, lowest bid or lowest buy-in game out there? It would be a game like this. Oh, okay. So you can. These are the. Um, this is the lowest type of game. You kind of can progress to like higher tables. There does seem to be some sort of like social aspect to it. Where, you know, if somebody spots you and you're doing well, they might come over and be like, oh, excuse me, sir, uh, there's an opening at this table, which has a, you know, 3,000 gold buy-in. Mm. But but all the tables are Windy Jarjo? Uh, some of them are Windy Jarjo and some of them are Star Jarjo. All right. What sort of card games are they? Like, is it uh, uh, more luck-based, more skill-based? So Windy Jarjo is... Uh, kind of a a good combination of both basically what you do is uh there's a one deck uh there's five suits and you combine you know numbers and or six suits numbers and suits to create hands but um as your cards are dealt you choose whether to uh have them face up or face down so you can either try to win with your face up cards or when the wind comes around all of your cards get flipped over so you can uh, basically you basically end up with two separate hands, some of them, one face up, one face down. So you can try and get in a surprise win if nobody's counting your cards right by flipping them all over, or you can just try to win with the uh, your face up cards. Okay. And and then uh, Star Jarjo is. Uh, a much more forgiving but more skill intensive game because it uh you sit five people and the dealer and the two people to your sides or or rather the the two people that are across from you if any of you win you win some amount of the pot and the two people to the side don't so mm-hmm. You are always either trying to win or try to get one of those guys to not win. Because the only time you don't get any money is if the people on either side of you win. 
Now, some of the people that you're trying to help win are also trying to maybe help win the person next to you, right? Because they're at a different point in the star. Nice. <laughs> well, they so sound like interesting games. Just for me to say, like, sit in one of the complementary positions for Ket and try to, like, so that we could help each other? Um, you could, but there doesn't seem, or there seems to be sort of a, um, like, when something opens, you can sit there. So mm-hmm. the likelihood uh, of sure. so it's ending hard to in a complementary position. That. Yeah, it's, it's actively and purposefully hard to coordinate that. Makes sense. Uh, since Orm doesn't is, has no interest in that, position, that means either of us are winning in most games. Well, in the Star JoJo, right? Yes, yes but it would also yeah. mean that we were competing against each other. So it's a hedge, but not pretty suboptimal. It might be better for me to be a, like a different table or something, or doing something different. Orm's just going to wander around, maybe order a sandwich, <laughs> maybe a drink, <laughs> and then he's going to just I- watch. And observe what all the security in the place is doing. Okay. But he's going to be real nonchalant about it, right? <laughs> sure. He's just going to sit there, eat his sandwich, you know, read the magazine, looking out, you know, poke a hole in the magazine, looking out. <laughs> you know, that, that does sound, that does sound about as nonchalant as Sorum can swing. Yep, exactly. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, why, why don't you go ahead and give me a uh, bluff check? Oh boy. Bluff. That's one of my best ones. Oh, God. <laughs> 30. That is not bad. Uh, Orem manages to be cool. Awesome. <laughs> not in a, hey, look at that cool guy kind of way, but in like a be cool, man. Kind of like, <laughs> I don't look like a narc. Yep, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> it. He manages to lower his narc level below noticeable levels. Awesome. Um... So Ket's playing. Which which one is is Ket playing? The the wind or the star? Star was the more skill oriented one, right? Yep. And star. Yeah, the wind one is a lot more like uh, kind of like a Texas Hold'em situation where there's a fair amount of skill, but also the cards that you are handed are much more impactful. Whereas in the star one, all the cards are in play almost. And it's more about sort of reading what everybody else is doing. Yeah, that sounds more like cat speed. Yeah. Uh, what is Randa's doing? Uh, those birds sounded neat, but I feel like they'd be mad if I started poking at one. <laughs> uh, you uh, can probably find a table that has cleared and poke uh, at one. Okay. <laughs> I'll go check out one of those birds. Okay, Randas goes and goes up to a table, and uh, there is a dealer wearing some nice red robes, human lady, uh, and she's like, "Oh, this table is not ready yet, sir. I need to count the money and and everything." Oh, uh, okay. I, I don't want to bother you. Uh, I was just uh, checking out this bird thing. Oh, these, yeah, pretty weird, huh? Yeah. Uh, what? What what do they do? They count money. Oh, that's neat. She uh, <laughs> takes like takes a little drawer that she has and like puts some money on the table, and the bird kind of like you see its eyes like move and dart around really quickly, and then it makes a noise. Yeah, it's like beep. <laughs> oh, I like it. It's neat. Yeah, I guess. Um, you know, before everybody went to sleep, we got these from uh, this place called the Hexagon Towers. Oh. There's a big order. That's why all the tables have them. I see. Yeah, that's neat. Oh, all right. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry to bother. Uh, thank you for the information. No, no problem. The table will be ready in a couple of minutes if you're interested. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think I'll just uh, wander around while my friends play. All right. Uh, or rather, I'm guessing she doesn't really respond to that, as I'm guessing Randus was just, like, moving away from her as she was saying that. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm guessing by the time he's done moving his mouth, he's out of earshot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Uh, what is the car doing? Hmm. How big an area are we in? It's just, like, massive 
This is massive. There are easily 400 tables, each of which see between uh, four and six people, depending on what game is happening. All of the star tables are six people, right? It's five in the dealer. Mm-hmm. Is it a big maze area to try and keep everybody you know, confused and make them think it's night and general uh, casino type stuff? No. no, really the the worst part about it is that they're all very close together. Like, you know, everybody can like lean back or scoot their chairs out and get in and out, but not a lot of room for walking. Um, that is one area of this sort of uh, main casino area. There's mm-hmm. other things to do around, too. Um, but they seem sort of... Uh, either more like one shot gambling, like a roulette type situation or um, maybe some games of skill here and there, but those actually seem pretty rare. There's maybe like a couple of uh, like dart boards and really it just seems like it's people hanging out by a dart board more than like any sort of like serious game going on. Hmm. Darts you say? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Were we allowed to keep our weapons or are we unarmed? Nope. Your weapons are uh, like nobody said anything when you walked in armed. All right. So other people are armed as well, I presume. A few people are armed. Um, Also, a few people are, you know, 20 foot long human faced snake monsters or, you know, big clawed toad monstrosities so <laughs> you know it's like so it's like a family you know, reunion yeah it's you know uh they're not uh, it's it's possible that they're just like well nobody's gonna start a fight or um that they're like well any sort of critter can walk in here and they might be able to you know shoot lasers from their antenna so getting rid of weapons is moot sakar is going to try and strike up a game of darts okay um, is he trying to like win money? Is he trying to just like hang out and kill time? I think win money. I mean, why not? We're here. Why don't you give me a, um, we'll call it a dex plus half level plus one roll. So my dex check is 13. Uh, dex plus half level. So roll a 20 plus 12 plus 1? Uh, 11. Why? You said half level plus 1? Oh, yeah, that'd be... I'm level 24, right? We're level 22. Oh, well, crap. <laughs> uh, I've I got tried. your... I mean, unless Rodrigo secretly gave you two levels. I might have two <laughs> levels that you don't know about. You don't know. I mean, I had fangs for like a year before you noticed. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead, We're Rodrigo. retracted. <laughs> Um, let me pull up your sheet sure. here. Uh, looks like your dex plus half level is 13. So it would be 13 plus half your level is 11 plus one. So 13. So d20 plus 13 plus 11 plus one. Ooh, that's a lot. All right. Hang on. I got to put in. A oh, bunch no, no, no. Of- I'm sorry. That I'm sorry. That's already including your half level. I, I don't know what I'm saying. So it's just 13 plus, a d20 plus 13 plus one. G plus one. I liked it better when it was 24 plus one. Uh, how do you feel about a 22? That's terrible. A 22 is, in fact, not great. Um, so you, mean. in fact, lose some money. But as the dartboard is not where the high rollers hang out, you lose some pocket money. Mm-hmm. But, but very quickly make some friends in that there are people that really want you to keep playing darts with them. <laughs> ah, good. Now I can use my amazing skills and pretend that I meant to do that. <laughs> it's it's uh, one of those things, like, you know, when you're Minnesota Fats, you come in and you play poorly, and then when they're all in on the fact that you're bad, then you boost it. You're like, boom, nat 20. Right, right. That's what happens. Uh, in the meantime, what's Little Sparkle doing? So, not to like mix game systems here, but I basically hmm. want to put on the rogue version of uh, Se- Seasoned Criminal 
Like, I uh-huh. just want to survey the place and be like, I am a shady person. Show me your shady dealings. I am interested in them. Okay. <laughs> um, well, it's, uh, that is kind of a complex. Oh, well, uh, no, never mind. That's streetwise. Give me a streetwise check or whatever. Sure it's called. Uh-huh. Streetwise, right? Hmm. Yes, that's a yeah. skill in this system. Yep, <laughs> yes, it is. But interestingly, and one that I am extremely good at. Luck is not one. <laughs> well, not. luck is you your know, die roll. Yeah, yeah, your die roll is, fa- is is that factor, right? Yeah. Uh, so I have a thirty-six streetwise. You definitely make some promising eye contact with some of the patrons and a couple of the staff um but it's uh it's a little early to tell what what exactly they're into cool i will continue observing okay so um we will go back to cat so cat's winning some money of course he's uh he's already you know, within a couple of games, moved up to like a higher level of table. Um, and just kind of uh, continues to play. Uh, there are a couple of things that you notice. Uh, one, they do use just straight up money here, and that's actually where the birds come in because the birds seem to be able to appraise money or goods or whatever immediately. So if somebody is like, ah, here's like a Ruby, the bird can look at that and be like, oh, well, that's, uh, that's not enough to, to cover this hand or, you know, okay, that's, you know, essentially a raise. Everybody go around and raise. Right. Mm hmm. Um, and then the other thing is that as you, especially once you win a, a, a full game, um, as you are, you know, scooping gold into your gold bucket, uh, some of it, uh, becomes tarnished. So it like kind of gets this like green, like patina on it as you like put it in. Same thing with some, uh, some jewels they like become somewhat opaque and and less shiny when you when you scoop them in interesting do the birds actually give an estimated value ever or is it just uh they don't but you can like put two things in front of them and they will estimate whether they're equivalent i think i'm going to start for most of my bets i'm going to start using uh these tarnished gold and see if the birds continue to evaluate them as they were or at an appreciated value yeah i guess not using the gold because the gold would i presume not get evaluated by the birds all that often are they fake gold what do you mean the gold wouldn't be appreciated by the birds all that often well if it's all coinage it should be i guess everybody's going to be using different coinage aren't they Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be trying to exclusively. It's not exclusively use tarnished winnings. Sure. Uh, I want to see if I can get a covert comparison of this without actually, like, asking for a comparison. Right. Um. They seem to be worth about the same. And in fact, as the game goes on, they get untarnished. Can I use Arcana to see if anybody at the table is being magical? Sure. What is my Arcana nowadays? Seven. Teen. Nope, 25. Because hmm. for whatever reason, it does not show up as actually trained on my character sheet. That's a 34. Um, You really don't spot anything that's like immediately magical there definitely doesn't like nobody here seems to be cheating or casting any sort of weird spell on your money i'm a toss a few coins in my no uh i'm a guy to crawl out invisible 
Okay. And have him watch as well. Okay. Just you know, mutter in supernal what's going, what I've noticed, and see if he notices anything that I do not mm. while I continue to play. Yeah, he doesn't really seem to know what's going on, other than it seems to be pretty superficial. Like, you know, it's like it's not transmuting the gold into something else. It's just kind of uh, making it look yucky. <laughs> and it's not just gold. Obviously, if there's um, coinage that has like any amount of silver or whatever, it, it like turns green or, you know. Can you tell if it's happening to everybody or just to you? Or That was my next question. It it seems to only be happening to you. It's all about you, Kat. It's all for you. By the way, this also happens to Sakar when he finally starts to win a little bit of money. <laughs> it's like oh. he gets he gets like Sakar makes like twelve silver out of a deal, and like uh, one of those turns immediately like turns green in his hand. Can I do a nature check out in the open, or would it be like a weird thing? I'm gonna no, do a surreptitious nature can, check. You can do it, but I, I mean, I'll just I'll just give it to you. This isn't like this isn't like any sort of uh, normal natural thing, or even a like primal magic thing. Mm-hmm. It's just a thing. Yep. And it's not happening to anyone else around me. Uh, it is not happening to anyone else at your game. And you, uh, at this point, you don't know that it's happening to Cat. Right, right, right. But I do know that it's happening to me, and that's what's important. Yep. Is it possibly a divine magic thing? Um, it could possibly be a divine magic thing. Can I roll a uh, religion and try and figure out? Sure. 32. Mm. Uh, nope. As far as you know... Can I try a perception check and see if there's something going on that I should have noticed already? Something mundane? <laughs> yeah. Um, Is it just like a minor glamour? Uh, I mean, a minor glamour could very well be what it is, you know, which is what I described, right? It's like it's just not very true. It's not really changing the nature of it. It's just making it look kind of less good. I'm going to try one of my magical perception checks, which is not actually magical, but about my perception. Okay. Kablamicus, 38. Well, that's nice. pretty good. Um, you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Well, I'll give you this. Um, uh, definitely one thing you perceive is that um, Scratchems is very interested in making sure that, you know, you have darts ready to go and that your bets are properly placed. Hmm. Oh. Does it seem in any way nefarious? I mean, Scratchems is like a weird gray little monster that always kind of <laughs> looks weird and scary, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just like he's in a in a room full of shady characters, he manages to be the shadiest looking character. So maybe. And I don't feel any type of strangeness or compulsion or anything about it. It's just the money looks nope. funky. Yep. And does it change back at any point? No, uh, but it seems to be cumulative. The more you win, and and Ked notices this as well. The more you win, the more that gets tarnished. Mm hmm. Huh. Uh, Can I see who all in our group is actually playing games right now? I know Orm. It's and, just. Uh, you don't see Orm. He's behind a magazine. Yeah, it's just yeah. you and Sakar. Um, Little Sparkle has probably disappeared around a corner by now. Um, Orm is. Uh, behind a magazine. Yeah, Orem is behind a magazine. Completely invisible. Um, no, nonchalant. I'm guessing uh, Randus has like find found some other thing to occupy himself with, <laughs> possibly unrelated to this 
whole casino thing that's happening right now. Extremely mm-hmm. possibly. Yeah. Well, um, that person has a watch. <laughs> Ooh, an automatic coin twister. These drinks seem to have so interesting viscosity. Let's see what happens if I mix it with some various substances. <laughs> um. So is, does Orm notice anything when while he's sitting there? Does he observe any any pattern or anything sure. going on? Sure. I mean, you can you can observe all kinds of stuff. You can observe like um, employee movements. You can observe security. You can observe all kinds of stuff. Okay. What do I, what do I, do I observe any, um, change in habit or actions when people playing the games are winning or losing beyond just the normal hooray and ho? Oh. <laughs> uh, yep. You do. You do see some, like clearly the house is active in moving people to bigger, um, Bigger places if they're winning, mitigating some issues here and there, um, you know, removing people that are too drunk, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Oh. Orm sets down his drink. <laughs> it's free drink. No, not this one was No, I had, to, I had to buy it. Oh, man. Because he's not playing. Yeah. By the way, is Ket drinking anything? Probably not. Well, Never heard from again. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you can order something non-alcoholic. Yeah, Kit will drink something non-alcoholic, but playing a game and impairing one's uh, faculties do not tend to go well together. Okay. Is Sakar drinking anything? Oh, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> he, he's had enough for a little while. <laughs> no, Sakar would not drink here. This is not his sort of clientele, if you will. We'll cut away. Oh, does that, anybody have any other questions? Um, when guy came out of the bag, did anybody appear to notice him? Um, yes, there were. You did catch a couple of glances, uh, from clientele, but none of the staff seemed to see him. I'm assuming everybody's within. 20 squares or so, except for maybe Sparkle, who's somewhere. Then 20 squares, how far is that? It's uh, 100 feet. 100 feet. Um, Sakar might not be within 100 feet, because the dartboards are kind of far away from that stuff, but everybody else is more or less within 100 feet, including Sparkle, who is just not necessarily visible. Yeah. Well, nerds, Sakar was the one I needed to actually talk to. <laughs> Didn't we activate a brain thingy? We did not. Well, we suck. Right? Why do we never activate the brain thingy when we need it? We activate the brain thingy when we're like going to the restroom, but not when we're going to be infiltrating. <sighs> we are not good at this. <laughs> now, I will say also that games do end, so you don't have to join another game right away if you want to take your winnings and go talk to Sakar. Mm, he's the tall one. Or vice versa, if Sakar wanted to, you know, put away his darts for a little bit and go talk and go see what Ket's up to, that is also a possibility. Actually, I think Sakar would probably want to find Master Ribbendorn. Okay. He's impossible Good to find. Yes. <laughs> he is incognito. <laughs> he's looking for Ribbendorn, not Little Sparkle. <laughs> Well, if he's incognito, I'll just go to Cognito, and he'll certainly turn up eventually. Oh, hey, Sakar. Hello. <laughs> I have a magical consultation question. Oh, okay. I hand him a little uh, coin that is definitely greenified. Mm-hmm. Do you, see uh, you don't have unusual? to pay me. I, do you I'll see do anything you unusual about this coin? It's green. Yes, it wasn't when I won it. Oh. I want to show him one that isn't. I presume I have some that aren't tarnished. Yep, the majority of the coins that you've won are not tarnished. Um, all right. Uh, can I perform an Arcana check? I will stare sure. into it deeply with my blue, sometimes green eyes and get a f- nat 20. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 
Now you have um, to pick which right color now. your eyes are because she hit a nat 20. Blue, so sometimes as, green. Yes. So as uh, as Orem observes this and runs his finger over the edge of it um, and focuses his mystical sight upon it, uh, he realizes that he feels like just the most tiniest imperceptible of forces acting upon this coin like as though as though it were to being it. pulled towards someone oh being pulled towards someone mm. or something okay all right i uh i uh pull out a single strand of my hair mhm and i it's glorious yes it is also uh, you is know, it blue or green it is very healthy no it's blonde it's yeah. it's very healthy hair will stand up and orum ties the hair around the coin and then holds the coin by the end of the string. Uh, you get a, you get a clear pendulum going. Yeah. And it's, and then I turn a different direction and does it still kind of swing towards the way it was swinging before? Yep. Mm. It's pendulating. I look at Scar and I say, you know what this means, don't you? I have no idea. It means we're going to go that way or maybe that way. I mean, it could be, and he looks both ways. I mean, it could be that way or that way. I start walking towards the direction of one swing to see if it gets stronger. <laughs> uh, it does not. All right. I, I, I move in a direction uh, to see if I can kind of triangulate a direction that I, that I most need to follow. Yep. You, you figure it out. All right. Where it gets. Let's, let's go this way. Do you see Randis anywhere? This this means Do I see Randus? Um yeah, Randus is probably off in some sort of, probably like a dining area, I'm guessing. Is like mm. people seem less judgy about someone not doing anything in a casino <laughs> if they're eating mm. or about to eat or at least sitting down. Two dollar prime rib. Yeah. <laughs> rib of what? We have no idea. Red Dragon. Um so we see Randus. Randus, Randus, come uh, here. Uh, yeah, hi. Come okay. We, we snag us a Randus. Hey, Randus, check this out. Uh huh. Sakar brought me this coin that's yeah. all green. See how green it is? It, but, yeah. But not all of his coins are tarnished this way. And this one wasn't tarnished when I won it. Oh. And so uh, I did a check on it, and there's this, there's this pull. Like the money wants to go somewhere. Uh, and look, and uh, I show him, and it's swinging. I'm like, we're following it. Oh, neat. Uh, how many of them are green? Oh, well, just this one. Just well, the one? No. I mean, that he gave me. I don't know about a, the rest. A percentage, and it seems like the more I won, the more turned green. Oh, well, uh, aren't a percentage of any weddings supposed to be given to our little friend? Hmm? You mean to Scratchums? Yeah, that thing. Oh, I don't know. Does it look like it's pointing towards Scratchums? Oh, yeah. He walks by with some juice for Cat, and the thing just totally pulls after him. Oh, <laughs> this is Scratchums money. I take yeah. a, You have another coin? I have many coins. The one, the one that's tarnished? Yes. I take it from him, and this time I roll it on the floor on its edge, and I want to see if it, it curves towards Scratchums. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it rolls right to him. Oh, there you go. Oh, it's a Mystery solved. Money. Thank you, Randis. Oh, okay. Let's hmm. let's go. Uh, so you're supposed to give Scratch on some of your winnings, right? Oh, yes, I presume so. Was that a deal that we had made with Scratchums? Yes. Okay. <laughs> was it? Okay. It's part of the hiring fee. Yeah. Right. That's kind of cool. I don't know if I would call that cool so much as unnerving. No, it's like instant tip machine, right? I mean, you know exactly <laughs> yeah. how much is owed to Scratchums. That is really cool. Anyway, we should probably let the others know. <laughs> or Agreed. maybe you should give your winnings to Scratchums or your tarnished coin to Scratchums. Why don't you give some to him and let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give Scratchums his cut. So uh, before we do that, um, mm -hmm. we'll cut to little sparkle who has already managed to get like 
three trades deep into some <laughs> underworld nonsense. Nice. She actually owns the place right now. Oh, you wish. <laughs> actually, you don't. That's you that wouldn't be a good idea. It's complicated. Yep. <laughs> um. So, uh, yeah. Basically, uh, her latest, um score and just kind of trying to see what is all going on around here is a little baggie like a little Uh-oh. sack that okay. has some mushrooms in it oh and boy when she first inspected them they were all kind of regularish looking gray mushrooms with like a red edge to like the edge of the cap was red and uh mm-hmm. now that she looks again some of them have like a light whitish dust on them, like a you know grayish Old. white kind of thing, like you would find like on top of a strawberry. Magic mm. dust. Um, it's the best like, kind of magic dust. Eat the mushrooms. Is it is it a commensurate percentage with our tip agreement? Uh, yep. <laughs> Guess this counts as winnings. Yep. Uh, so what? Eat the mushrooms. <laughs> no, those are for <sighs> some other deal. You know, what am I supposed to do with the mushrooms? <laughs> eat them. You know, keep an eye out for somebody you who needs them, or or you might be on your way to get somebody some mushrooms. Cool. <laughs> it's up to you. If you want to, like, go talk to the guys, you might be in the like done with a deal. If you want to just kind of keep doing your thing, you might be in the middle of a deal. Uh, sure, I can be done with the deal for the moment. Okay. Uh, when you come out uh, from around that pillar, you see um, or um, roll a coin towards the gambling floor uh, and Randus and Sakar hanging out by him. And uh, then off over there where the tables are, you spot, you know, Ket and like Scratchums is bringing him a drink. She'll give a little wave. Oh, hey, little sparkle. I didn't see you there. Hey, how it goes? Uh, it's going. Um, we, uh, or rather, Sakar won some money. And oh. uh, an interesting thing is uh, some of it turned color. And we figured mm-hmm. out that that's the money that's owed to Scratchums. Oh, yeah. Apparently my mushrooms also count as winnings. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, she'll like open up the little bag. Well, oh. Uh, but I assume we pay out at the end, so I'm going to keep trying to ante this up into something more interesting. Oh, okay. That sounds fair. Do you think we should... We were just going to go see if Scratchums wanted some of this money now. Uh, That's what you want, but like I said, I'm pretty sure you pay out at the end. Okay. All right, well, if that's the case... I've got a magazine to read. <laughs> cool. What what are, what are you doing? What am I doing? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out the real game. The real game? And he looks around at the big gambling table. I think it's pretty obvious, right? I mean, the house wins. They make money off of these guys. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out what the house's game is or what the game is for the people who are here who aren't suckers. Oh. I resemble that remark. Hey. Scratchums comes by with another drink for Orem. Oh, hey, thank you, Scratchums. How are you doing? I'm fine. Good, good. We pay you out at the end, right? That's right. Cool. All right. You all need anything else? No. Oh. Thank you, and uh, I pay him with my own. You want to guide me to, I don't know, someone who might buy mushrooms or some other, I don't know, high roller that you think I should meet? Uh, yeah, I can find that for you. <laughs> Sounds good. Follow hey, me. You want to buy some mushrooms? And he kind of, you know, he does his little weird waddle walk. Cool. So wave off the guys. Yep. Wave back. Waddles, or not waddles, that's the pig from Gravity Falls. Uh, <laughs> Scratchums. <laughs> Scratchums who waddles, uh, takes a little sparkle. Um, to 
up one floor to where some people are just kind of hanging out. Uh, some of them are playing games, but it seems to be a lot more casual. Not a lot of money is being exchanged. And uh, there are some like young, patrician-looking uh, people hanging out together, making way more noise than everybody else. Everybody seems to be a lot more chill, but this is like uh, four ladies and four dudes. All of them are human. Um, they're wearing pretty nice clothes and, Aww. you know, they're, you know, kind of being like performatively loud. Like, you know, they're mm-hmm. not like screaming, but they're laughing very loudly and very visibly for everyone to see having a good time drinking. And, you know, they are in the middle of a game, but, you know, nothing really seems to be. It doesn't really seem to be moving forward. Sure. And Scratchums just kind of walks to a fair distance away and stops. Mm. Sort of nod the uh, nobles. We do have some of those. Are these, she like opens them up, party mushrooms? He looks in. Uh, Not my expertise, but I think they'll probably know what they are. Sounds good. Thanks. And he just waddles away. I'll stroll up casual like. <laughs> hey, bird lady. <laughs> Hello. I uh, have something that I thought might be of interest to you. And she'll like open up the bag just a little bit. One of them looks in and he's like, whatever. We got plenty of those. Really? Yeah. But, like, how much? How much are they worth to you? Nothing. Just curious. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Can I make some kind of, like, I don't know, streetwise or sense motive or check to try to figure out what I should ask for for these? Uh, Yeah, streetwise seems right. Cool. Uh, Bleh. Bleh. Roll. Okay. Uh, 29? Um, yeah, guessing from your own experience with uh, black markets, you have like a, a price in mind? She's like, oh, honestly, I'm less interested in money tonight than I am in information, friendship. So consider these uh, a token of friendship. Oh, seriously? Seriously. Ah, oh, you're all right, bird lady. What are you drinking? Oh, uh, I'll, you know, haven't had anything to drink here tonight. What's, what's good? Oh, man. You've got to try this bile. Oh, sure. I've seen that. That seems fun. Yeah. <laughs> Do they have, uh, they no, have, like, you a gotta, bottle of you it? gotta order, like, a shot of it. Okay, I'll Basically. flag someone down and order a shot. Yeah, yeah. They, it's like the the table is like paid for. Cool. They got bottle service because his dad owns the dealership. Pretty oh, much. Oh yeah. I'll slide into the booth. Yep. What's uh, what's Ket doing? Still racking his brain. Um. As soon as they see the gathering of uh... nerds. We'll go with nerds. Uh, I'll actually attempt to send a guy over there uh, to see. Um, Randus feels some invisible pressure on his shoulder and hears. (laughs) Uh, I I think guy's here. (laughs) What? Yeah, you look over at Ked and he's looking right at you. Uh, I wave. I'll look back to the game. No, oh, he didn't want to wave back. I wager Hazard has figured oh. out what we have figured out. Yeah, I do send a, one of the green coins and one of the non-green coins with Guy. Okay. Mm. The coin appears out of nowhere. Yep. <laughs> but where was he keeping it? I don't <laughs> even want to know. Oh, Ket doesn't understand. Hey, mm. uh, little monster thing. 
That's the His cut that's is... owed to Scratchums. Okay. Randas stops feeling that pressure. Okay, I think he left. I believe its name is Zalgaius, Master of Endor. Yeah. So, Guy will relate that to Cat. Cat's paranoia turns back to a his, his regular level instead of, you know, enhanced levels. <laughs> yeah, Cat has definitely uh definitely taken a couple of half wins just trying to figure this out. Yeah. But uh he can he can get back on track now. Okay. We figured it out before him. Yeah. Don't let Brian him. figured it out. He pretty much figured oh, yeah. it out right away. <laughs> Brian knew it like a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Well, Randis is the smart one. <laughs> I kind of had a idea as soon as Rodrigo specifically mentioned scr- Scratchums. Scratchums. Yeah. Mm. As soon as you specifically mentioned Scratchums when dealing with Sakar's money. Mm. It's like, ah, okay. Let's let the scene play out now. Mm. Scratch them. Well, I had uh, no idea. So. Yeah, it's it was a weird thing. I wanted to see, you know, what you guys did with it. Um, Scratchums goes up to Ket with a big uh, sack, and uh, yeah, he goes up to him and says, "Want me to trade some of that in for you?" Sure. I'll give him. I don't know, like 75% of it to get upgraded or traded in. Okay. Yep. And he goes off and, you know, comes back with like a uh, little satchel, like a little bag. Um, and, you know, he goes, uh, a coin purse, basically. And, you know, basically trades it into, I don't know, stupid D&D currency, Electrum. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think Electrum is very much, actually. Mithril or... Platinum, Astral Diamonds. Plutonium. We're not at Astral Diamond levels, but definitely, (laughs) probably Platinum or some other... Yeah, something dumb like... Plutonium. Yes. Plutonium, yeah. Uranium. Palladium. (laughs) (laughs) Scratchums as like, uh, are you want are you going to go back to your other hotel or are you going to spend the night here? Do you know what it's gonna take to get a high roller invite? Oh, you're doing pretty well. I'm sure you'll be in the high money tables in no time. The private rooms are another matter. Is that what you were referring to? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, you're doing really, really well, so I would comfortably estimate a an invite into a private room in less than 11 or 12 years. <laughs> Just give him a dead stare. Uh, and pick up after the game I'm currently in. Uh, we need a time frame that's a little uh, better than that. Uh, that is assuming that you win most of your games from here on out. And also that you bet intelligently, but you're doing really good at that. I've practiced a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'm going to head back over to uh, the nerd party. <laughs> okay. Sparkleback or Sparkle wherever... Scratch him. No, nope, she's not. Yep, yeah, she's not around right now. Any word? So, winning our way in is going to take way too long. Mm. De- define way too long. A uh, dozen years or so, right? That's my estimate. On the plus side, if time breaks down entirely, that could be mere <laughs> moments. <laughs> I don't want to rely on that because it also could be, you know. 1200 years if time breaks down entirely well it's not like we'd know the difference no but I'd like to see my family again so how do we proceed from here uh, I assume Sparkle was trying to uh, sneak she, her way in <laughs> she seemed to be involved in some sort of chicanery I can take you to her if you want okay 
Uh, where did you take her? Up to the second deck. Will it be conspicuous if this group shows up? Think uh, about what you're asking. Yes, <laughs> we, you're all we very are conspicuous. conspicuous. Do you know what she was doing up there? Mm, she was talking to some kids. Does she need to be present to engage a telepathic spell? Yes. Only if she wants to be part of it. <sighs> we could. I, I could just tell her that you want to talk to her. That is an yeah, option. Go let her know what we've come to realize and if uh, she could join us down here for a moment. Okay. He goes off. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the second deck, bird, 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 bird. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking some shots. <laughs> Yep. Sweet. Are we going to get uh, drunk sparkle? Because uh, that sounds awesome. <laughs> I mean, we've already had that the one time. My con score is not high. <laughs> yeah, but your sleight of hand is pretty good. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will. It would be a question will, of how drunk you actually want to get. I do not want to get drunk. Though I do oh. want to try a little bit of this weird shit to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I do want to try a little bit of this weird stuff to uh, to see what happens because that seemed really neat. As far as you can tell, while you were under the influence of it, your sense of smell got really good. Hmm. That's pretty much it. And, you know, you were like super drunk there for a little bit because like we said. Your con's not very good. So if you actually took yeah. a shot of it, you really felt it there for a minute. And sure, now but it's, it's uh, pretty clearing. Yeah, now it's mostly just a like a coppery taste in your mouth. And cool. you see Scratchums come by. I like kind of look at him. Your uh your friends are looking for you. Oh, all right then. Uh, she'll wave, be like, you're going to be here for a bit? Yeah. And then later on, we're going to the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like fun. All right. I'll be back. Okay. I'll go down with him. Yep. Here comes scratch and a little sparkle. Hey. Hey. What's up? Oh, so winning our way into the vaults is not going to be a, an option. Oh, that's too bad. At least not with a normal progression. We're looking at 11 or 12 years. Oh, that's a long time. Well, not if we're having fun. <laughs> it's no, that's just a long time. Yeah. Considering we have a few days for everything to start breaking down. Or Hmm. Huh. So what are our other options? Were you having any luck, Sparkle? Eh, I found some rich kids that like to party. I could, I mean, I don't know what kind of my timeline would be, because I, I don't know, Scratchums, mm. you saw the game I was playing. How do you think, how long do you think it would take for me to get to someone who actually is a real player around here? Um... Well, that would probably be faster, but I can almost guarantee that the stuff you would have to trade in would be significant, and it wouldn't be money. Like what? Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you know? Blood, bones, uh, a year and a day of servitude, that sort of thing. It doesn't have to be from you. <laughs> oh. Fun. Yeah, the stakes get pretty high. All right. Well, then, do you have any better advice for how to get into that vault? Fast? Yeah. Mm, uh, the fastest way, I suppose, would be to break into it. Uh -huh. uh, it seemed pretty secure. Oh, yes. Very secure. Well, what's the easiest way to break into the vault? 
<laughs> mm. If it was me, I would just teleport in. Hmm. Can you teleport in? I can. So why haven't you done that? Because that's not what I do. If you take something from the vault, I get a percentage of that. Mm. If I take something from the vault, what am I going to do with it? I don't know. What do you do with any money? That vault doesn't have money. Can Uh, you teleport other people in with you? Not safely. How thick are the walls? Very thick. Is there a time when things get taken out or put into the vault? Mm, the main time would be if something else gets put into the vault. What do we have that would be worthwhile putting into the vault? <laughs> what sort of things go in a vault? Well, valuable things. Oh. Very valuable things. Things of transcendental importance would go in that vault. You have a nose for things of value. Are we carrying anything that would be considered that way? Hmm. Mm, maybe, but you'd have to prove its worth. Other people aren't what, going to understand it. What would that be? He points at Randis. Huh? Is Randis the one who's got the starfish? <laughs> no? I don't think so. Who has the starfish? It's him. It's in the bag. Andy Haversack. So Orm has it? Yeah. Okay. I uh, think he's pointing at Randis. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Well, put, putting Randis in the vault? Yeah. But you'd have to prove that he has some sort of temporal incongruity that's <laughs> or, uh, worth something to someone, and then you'd have to lose him in a game. Mm. Mm. Hmm. That seems like a non-starter. I don't know. The big problem with that is that no one's going to bet something that valuable at the lower table, so you'd have to end up with the high rollers anyway Mm. in order to do that. (laughs) So we have something of value. (laughs) Someone of value, Uh. excuse me. Well, why can't we just ask Randa to be secured in the vault? I mean, he's ours, right? Is he? Yeah, but the vault is for the house, not for the, mm. the guests. Yeah, this is not a bank. And I'm extremely uncomfortable with the idea of one of us as an item of value and or power. It seems like there are easier ways. Are we you could simply just break mostly in. familiar with this casino or with the entire boardwalk? Mm, my expertise is here at the tea house, mm. but I know some things that go on in other places. Do you know any of the high rollers here? Any of the uh, private? Yeah, I know them. Is there anyone you could maybe just make an introduction to us to? Would we be able to be accelerate things if we got an invite directly from someone? Mm. Maybe, but even then, they would be taking a big risk by inviting someone who hasn't proven themselves in any way. Have you heard of the Cobalt Alley? I have heard of the Cobalt Alley. Hi. Hello. (laughs) Introduce me to one of them. I'm part of the Cobalt Alley. Oh. Okay. I'll go ask around. Thank you. He goes off. Well, while we wait for his return, why don't we take a break this week and uh, come back and see um, see if Ket's Gambit plays off or if we're going to lose us Arandus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he can run out of the vault. Don't worry. I'm not uh, gambling the Randus yet. How thick are these walls? Are they at, <laughs> are they are they at least five squares thick? <laughs> well, three. <laughs> are they less than? I can teleport five. Um, well, you have to see. Listen, everybody, here's what we need you to do. We need you to head over to Majorspoilers.com and in the comment section for this episode, share your thoughts. What should we do? What will we do? 
Ah, oh, there are some healthy discussions that go on when people post the comments over there at Majorspoilers.com. Then the next thing that we need you to do is head over to Apple Podcasts and uh, share some reviews. Share some of those five-star reviews that you guys are awesome at delivering. And let's see if we can't get some more people to join in on this wonderful adventure that we are having. And then uh, maybe if you want to listen to next week's episode right now, become a patron. Patreon.com slash Majorspoilers, $5 and up, $5 a month. $5 and up will get you access to next week's episode right now and a week early and ad free. Hmm. Thanks so much for checking us out this week on Critical Hit. And until next time, remember, it's not uh, cheating if you don't get caught. And let's hope that all of your dice rolls are critical hits and that uh, I guess your coin lands a uh, non tarnished side up. <laughs> This podcast is copyright 2018 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.